Praise God. Welcome to another segment of the House of Prayer Online Ministry, where our founder is the late Dr. Danny Harris. Um, I am one of the pastors, um, Patricia Harris. We thank God for Apostle John out of Fugleville, Texas, one of the other pastors here at the House of Prayer Online Ministry. Today, we're just going to talk about, um, you know, only God can fix it. Uh, a lot of times we get in situations and we go to other people and we're asking them different advice and we think that they know this and they know that. Now, in actuality, we're all going through something at um, different levels and at um, sometimes at different times. Everybody don't go through at the same time. Some of us are just coming into a storm. Some of us are in a storm and some of us are going out of a storm. Uh, let us pray. Let's acknowledge God and go before the throne of grace. Our God, our Father, we thank you and praise you in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are wonderful. You are an awesome God. I thank you and I praise you as you teach me, God, how to lead and teach the people of God. Allow me to be the first example and partaker of your word. Allow my lifestyle to shine so people will say, what must I do to be saved? Not so much as what I'm saying, God, but how much I'm living of the word that I am teaching to the people of God. I thank you and I praise you for the opportunity. I don't take it for granted. I don't take it lightly, but I am humbled by the opportunity. We thank you and praise you as you forgive us for our sins, God. We ask for forgiveness. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you. Amen. Let us start. We're going to talk about it. You know, only God can fix it. You know, we sit there, like we were saying earlier, and um, we see people in some of the same situations we started off in. And then you look to the side and you're like, okay, I know they're not living right. I know they don't halfway go to church and it seems like they're progressing farther than i'm progressing it seems like they're getting farther ahead than i am lord have you forgotten about me i'm doing everything you told me to do you know i've repented for my sins and you said once i repent you will forgive me for my sins you know i'm doing everything that you want me to do i'm leaning and i'm trusting and i'm depending on you but at the same time you don't realize and understand that you're murmuring you're complaining yes thank you jesus Murmuring and complaining is a sin. So instead of, and covetousness is a sin, you're coveting somebody else's gift because they have that car and you're still riding around in a jalopy and you're going to church and you're praising God and you're lifting up the name of Jesus and perhaps they live in a foul life. You know they're not saved. They were just partying the other day across the street at, your, at the house or down the street or your cousins or your friends or, you know, your neighbor, June Bug now, you know, and you like, wow. Now, how in the world did he get a new car? He playing the lottery. You know, he didn't hit the number for all his money. And uh, now he running around telling me he blessed. The Lord done blessed him to hit the lottery. Don't be deceived. God ain't going to let you hit the lottery. The lottery is played by chance. And God's blessings aren't by chance. They are from favor, faith, and trusting and believing in him. You know, the lottery has nothing to do with Jesus. Nothing. You know, that's a chance that somebody took and it just happened to fall on their side at that time. But uh -uh. but if you lean and trust and depend on God, I guarantee you, and you tie with the money that you have, <laughs> the money God gives you will last a lifetime. Favor lasts forever. It never runs out. That little money that they're getting, it's going to run out. You know, I can tell you, I'm a living witness. I used to do it. I used to play the lottery. God delivered me from that. I used to be out there trying to do my thing, thinking I had all the money in the world. God delivered me from that. And I realized I sat there one day and I was like, you know what, Lord, all of that stuff I did, all of that simple stuff I did, and thinking I was getting ahead, I still don't have nothing to show for that. But when I decided over 20 years ago to give my life back to you and I repented, came back to you, and I tithed and I started giving you praise and I started honoring God. I started getting blessed. I started seeing the manifestation and the manifestation kept growing and growing and growing. No, it didn't happen overnight. I had to wait on God. The Bible says, wait on the Lord. And while you wait, worship him. While you wait, praise him. You know, because those same people that's running ahead of you and that's trying to go faster than you, eventually they're going to fade out because they're not running on faith. They're not running on the Holy Ghost, you know, and God will keep you moving. I don't care if you're 50 years old, you may see somebody 50 and somebody 20, that 50 year old giving God praise and they shouting and lifting up the name of Jesus. And that 20 year old over there giving God praise and they praise could be real, but they not last as long as that 50 year old is because that 50 year old had been through some things. They didn't have some hard times and they didn't have some struggles in life and they depended on Jesus and God didn't took them through some things. So therefore they sold out. They sold out. 
Now, not to say that a 20-year-old can't be sold out, because they can be. But I'm here to let you know, when you find an old mother on the mother's board, and she giving God praise, you rest assured. She done been through some things. And she can tell you about waiting on God and being of good courage while you wait. You know, when, you, when God does things, God do them for perfection. God does them so they'll last throughout eternity. You know, not just for a few seconds, not just for a few minutes. So, therefore, when you see other people, you think they're getting ahead and you're still going through and, okay, they didn't foreclose and, you know, and the house foreclosed and they this, they that, and I'm going through God. And I looked over there and uncle such and such and aunt such and such, they ain't even giving you praise. And they didn't bought another. They don't like five houses on the street. And they ain't halfway giving you the praise that I'm giving you. And I know it. I know I'm doing this and I know I'm doing right. But God said, you're a diamond in a rough. And since you're a diamond, I got to clean you off because diamonds are dirty and they're filthy. So it takes a little longer for me to clean you off. But at the same time, you got to understand, I'm the potter and you the clay. That's what the word of God says. Jesus is the potter and you're the clay. You can't tell a potter how long for you to spend on there, can you? You can't tell him, look, I'm the clay and I'm tired of you bending me this way, molding me that way, shaping me that way. No, you've got to learn how to wait on him. Just wait on him, depend on him. God has an all-seeing eye. He knows everything. He sees everything. And he knows the heart of man. Just because you think it's going this way, you think it's going that way. You don't follow these people late at night. God is with each and every one of us. He knows what's going on behind closed doors. He knows everything that we're doing. And only he can make your crooked things straight. Crookedness can be straight in the name of Jesus. When you repent and surrender all and give your heart to God, there is no good thing he won't withhold from you. Everything your heart desires, he'll bless you with it. According to his riches and glory. It's not about what you want. It's about what you need according to God's will. I thank God for each and every one of you. I hope and pray that I've said something to encourage you today. Knowing that God can, God will, at his appointed time, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Trust not your flesh because it's filthy, just like mine is. But I guarantee you, I can tell you about a man named Jesus. He said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll make you the head and not the tail. He'll make you a lender and not a borrower. You're above and not beneath. You are a warrior. You are strong in his sight. And when you're weak, he'll make you strong. When you can't handle it and you think you're failing, that's when God come in and pick you up. He said, wait a minute, I got you. I was waiting for you to surrender to me. Now I can work. God bless you.